this whole offseason here in 2024, all you hear about is this wide receiver two position. Every creator on YouTube, every media person, that's all they can talk about is that wide receiver room and making it a huge deal. And I asked myself, did we quickly forget about this tight end room and the potential there and what they could possibly do for 2024? Welcome back to Mike Drop Sports, everybody. I'm Jason. Let's dive in here on a Tuesday talking Steelers football. And something's been driving me crazy here, guys. And that is the um, way that I feel like everybody's kind of forgotten about this tight end room and what they could potentially do and what they could bring to this offense. And what they could bring to specifically an Arthur Smith style offense. A man that has been known in the NFL to want to dominate in the trenches. Really be a guy running those jumbo heavy sets. Controlling the time uh, of possession and the pace of the game with that, that running game. With that running style of being bruising, nasty, uh, really controlling type football. And you ask yourself... Why are we forgetting these tight ends and what they could do inside of that type of offense? You want to come out in those jumbo sets? You want to come out in two, three tight end sets? Utilize them. You have those guys. But you're not boxing yourself in. And I think Arthur Smith is smart enough to know. Mike Tomlin is smart enough to know. That when you will these guys out there, that they can do more than just be there as big bodies and be an extension of the run game. They can do more than that. They can get out there and make big catches. They can get out there and create mismatches. And I think that with the over uh, um, obsession over this wide receiver position uh, that I think could potentially work itself out with players like Calvin Austin, Van Jefferson, Roman Wilson, I think will eventually work itself out to where this wide receiver room's uh, okay and serviceable and can get things done and uh, won't be a liability. But I look at this as a, as a big opportunity for this tight end room. And you look at guys like Pat Fryermuth that are going to be looking to get paid, man. And this is a giant golden opportunity for someone like him. A guy that last year when he was given double-digit targets within a game, he was able to go for a buck 20, buck 25 against the Cincinnati Bengals and really be effective with a shitty quarterback in Kenny Pickett. Uh, so he was able to get it done then. So we know Pat can get it done, but yes, there are injury concerns there uh, that he hasn't been able to remain healthy like you would have liked uh, so far throughout his NFL career. But I think barring... Uh, Barring anything crazy, hopefully, and my fingers are crossed for Pat, that he will remain healthy and be able to be effective for the Steelers. Uh, because if he is healthy, he can be effective. And I think uh, he will be able to have a uh, quality chemistry with Russell Wilson. And I know you all will battle back and say, Russell Wilson can't throw over the middle of the field. I think that that's... Um, uh, a, a false statement and I think that he can and I think that he will and I think that he will utilize this tight end room across the middle of the field but guess what the good thing is they don't run just routes into the middle of the field they can do everything uh, quick seams they can run outs they can run anything uh, so who cares they're not just limited to there and I think Russell Wilson can throw it all over the ballpark man all over the football field so I'm not overly concerned about that I think that they will utilize this tight end room. And I think they themselves know what kind of potential is there. You look at Darnell Washington, a guy that um, just isn't an extension of the run game, in my opinion, that has absolute great hands, good athletic ability. Um, yes, he has a little bit of injury concern because you worry about his knees and things of that nature, especially at his size, doing what he can do. Um, so you worry about that a little bit, but... Don't live in your fears, as Mike Tomlin would say. Get them out there and allow them to go to work, man. You saw teams in the past, like the Patriots and other teams, utilized uh, several tight ends on their football team throughout a season, uh, running double tight end packages and really trying to get those tight ends involved, and you saw great success with that. So I think the Pittsburgh Steelers could definitely do something like that this season. When you bring these bigger bodies out there, this tight end room, and you load up into these heavier sets, I think that you have a golden opportunity to still be able to be versatile and pass out of those sets and be highly efficient. 
I think that that is definite possibility. I think you look at Connor Hayward, another guy that's supposedly in this tight end room, which I think will be put on this roster as a fullback slash H-back type role. Uh, you'll look for him to play like a Dallas Clark type role. And I think if you will out, you know, the likes of Pat Fryermuth, Darnell Washington, Connor Hayward with the wing, Najee Harris, the lone set. I think that honestly, you could really do some really cool things out of that because you can be really effective in the run. I think that you can be really effective in the pass because I think there's some mix, mismatch opportunities there, especially for a guy like Connor Hayward, whom I've been preaching all, all off season and last year during the season that he was underutilized and really has some significant potential to do some good things. So hopefully they utilize him. I love his athleticism. I love the way he can catch the football. And I think that he is a mismatch nightmare for inside linebackers and maybe some smaller slot cornerbacks. Maybe Connor can really uh, take advantage of those situations. But I look at it and I say to myself, you could really also be uh, running a, a, a high up-tempo offense out of that. And I don't think people realize, realize that. You think of when you bring in that big personnel, you have to be really slow and methodical. But I think you can mix it up and take the change of pace and use it to your advantage. Because you can throw out of it. You can do different things out of it due to the athleticism of your bigger body guys in that tight end room. So you you say to yourself, we can run that tempo offense, get up to the line, boom, 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 pound that run, throw that quick pass, do those things, move those chains, still emphasizing time of possession uh, and really controlling the pace of the football game, slow it back down, huddle up, be slow, do your thing. Really keep a defense on their heels, guys. And I think if you're Arthur Smith, Mike Tomlin, I hope. Well, I think and I hope that they are smart enough to realize what is in front of them in terms of what they are able to possibly do with this group. And I think if they take and really utilize this group the way that it should be uh, and take advantage of what is on your roster right now in front of you and not worrying about what ifs or what could be's or uh, who's out there for trade, focus on what you have right now. Because I think that they are smart enough to realize that you don't have to go out there and grab some big name $30 million wide receiver uh, to be good. Because I think you can be good with what you have. I think the wide receiver room will shake itself out and you will see the emergence of a number two wide receiver but I'm getting so nauseated of talking about that wide receiver room and I wanted to focus on what is actually on this roster and what can be done and, and this tight end room keeps popping out to me. You even got guys like McCole Pruitt out there, a former Atlanta Falcon, knowing Arthur Smith's system that could really be a valuable tool, a valuable asset throughout this 2024 campaign. And I definitely think Arthur Smith wants to utilize guys like McCole Pruitt to really help guide the rest of this group and get them up to speed quickly to where they can hit the ground running and be super efficient whenever they're running double, multiple tight end sets. And you're going to be able to do so much out of that. Even guys like Cordrell Patterson that are going to be able to come in and mix it up and play even a role like Connor Hayward does with a big speed or will or should play, sorry, not does, but should or will play like an H-back type role, uh, a wing-back type player to where you can get uh, Cordrell out there on uh, those linebackers, creating those mismatches. And I think if you look at this Steelers offense as a whole, and many of you doubt them and think that they are going to be an absolute disaster, um, I think, yes, there is potential for that to happen. But I think if you utilize correctly in taking in the personnel that you have and being effective with what you have on the roster, I think that they could be absolutely dangerous and lethal and really um, put out some ridiculous stuff. I think that they could really shine, man. I, I definitely do. And I would love to see... Um, the Steelers team come out there in those ultra jumbo, big, heavy packages to where you have guys like uh, Darnell, Pat, and Connor out there all at once with a, a you know maybe a, a Patterson in the backfield. That's a lot of size. That's a lot of uh, weight to be thrown around out there, and it's a lot to make the defense think about because you, if you're a defender, you're going to say to yourself, "Wait." Should we really load up in the box, man? Because these guys can pass out of this situation. 
Uh, should we just get really uh, heavy on the defensive side of the football and become flat-footed, selling out to the run? Because these guys can run and run after the catch and be able to do some special things in the past game. So should we do that? What should we do here in this situation? And I think you will really confuse defenses with that because if they do load up, become really heavy, I think that that is a, a big advantage for the Steelers. And you could really get into that up tempo once the defense does sell out to that run after you've been effective with that run and you're still in those jumbo packages. I think that you could get uh, into that up tempo offense and really keep them on their heels. Don't allow that defense to substitute and and really just throw the shit out of the football out of it also, but yet still have the ability to run a draw play and keep them confused. Uh, you know, there's several things that you can be able to do, and I really like what the Pittsburgh Steelers could potentially do here. Uh, I really think that this could be an exciting offense for 2024. Maybe not light it up for 40, 50 points a game, but honestly, I think that they could average 20, 25 points, 30 points a game, somewhere in that range, and uh, be really, really, really good. I, I definitely think that they could definitely be uh, something decent to where uh, very serviceable and uh, will keep you in ball games and won't be the reason you lose ball games like it was last year when they were three and out, three and out, three and out. And you saw what they were able to do with effective NFL play calling. They were able to score points. They were able to move the football with a quarterback like Mason Rudolph. And I think Russell Wilson will be able to do the same. So, um, fingers crossed, guys. But let's quit overlooking this tight end room. Let's really focus on that. And I know we don't want other teams to focus on it right now. So maybe you want to underplay it a little bit still. But let's not forget as fans of this football team. And I hope the Steelers don't forget what they have there. And what kind of an exciting brand of football they could actually play. If they get that tight end room ultra involved. And really utilize their skill set each and every single week. And I think the Pittsburgh Steelers could potentially have a weapon there that is uh, very, 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 very hard to defend for opposing defenses in 2024. All right, guys, don't forget our live show tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the show Steel City Live, only here on Mike Drop Sports. I'm your host, Jason, and uh, I'll join you tonight again. Uh, thank you all for stopping through. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Send us out into the YouTube algorithm as we continue to grow our community uh, of thousands of like-minded Steeler fans, NFL fans as a whole. Uh, so, Make sure you do that. Share it to all your friends, family, all that kind of stuff. And uh, continue to grow our conversation. Uh, that is pretty damn cool. And uh, I really enjoy it. So until tonight, uh, yeah, I'm Jason. This is Mike Drop Sports. Peace. Peace.